Harm. Who's the fifth one? Deb Harris. Oh. Deb oh, you're there, Deb. Okay. Yeah. I'm on by phone. Okay. Can everyone see what I'm sharing? Yep. Yep. Perfect. All right. We'll get started. All right. Today is Thursday, July 22nd, 2021. This is the Lake Management Committee meeting. Uh, all meetings of the Lake Management Committee are recorded. And this is uh, all remote participation today. Hello? Hello. When Vic is ready, we can do the roll call. Make sure everyone's okay. here. Did we lose Dick? I think we did. No wonder why it's so quiet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Do you guys want, I can pull it up and just do it. Yep. All right, let's go for it. Um, one moment. Hey, Annie, do you have the page with the names on it? Is that up top or down below? Oh, there we go. Yeah, we'll do that. Uh, right, no we, 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 I, I sent uh, uh, an email to Dick yesterday. You still have Paul Murphy as a no for voting and Rick Wyatt as a yes. Okay. He just sent me a new updated one uh, and said, use this for every single one. Okay. I use my computer, my iPad, so sometimes I just pull up an old one. So I apologize, Paul. Nothing against you. It's my fault. I will make sure that changes. And uh, okay. we can, uh, when we review the minutes, we'll make sure that um, we put that in there. Okay. Thank you. Of course. All right. So Norm Cheever. Present. Mike Coombs. I'm here. Mike DeBay. Oh, I'm skipping Malcolm. Malcolm DeBay. Yep, I'm here. Mike is not here yet? No. Okay. I just uh, talked Dick, to him. Okay. Dick was on, so for now we'll just say yes. Uh, Scotty? Nope. 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 Annie, I'm here. Deb? Here. Eric? Not here. Paul? Here. Ken? Not here. Rick? Not here. All right. So did everyone read the minutes? Yep. yep. Yeah. Okay, great. Any changes aside from uh, Paul will change you to a voting member and Rick is non-voting? I have one small change on item number 10. 10, all right, I'll pull it up. Please we don't have the chair or the vice chair here. My goodness. All right. We need to add Norm Cheever to this list of thanks. You got it. That was part that. of the inventory. You got it. I can do that. All right. Who else is uh, good at reading all of this? Does anyone else want to start or should we just uh, wait a few minutes? I can put myself on mute and give Dick a call. Yeah. Why don't you give Dick a call? Yeah. Okay, yeah, just one Dick. moment. I'll yeah. call him now. Okay. I think without Dick, we don't have a quorum. You're right. Wow. Oh, darn. Oh, darn. Right. I know. He was dismissed. Okay. <laughs> One moment, okay. <laughs> Mike, I drove by your house the other day and saw the Cobra out. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you had it in the driveway, man. It was uh, maybe Wednesday. Looked beautiful. Yeah. yeah, doing a big cleanup on everything. <laughs> Good for you, man. Looked great. It's in everything. I almost pulled in, man. I want to take a picture of it. I've never yeah. seen it down from the lift. It was always on the lift <laughs> when I saw it. I, I had the, the boats out trying to dry them out. There hasn't been like a sunny day in a long time. I know. Out either. Yeah. Today so was do, beautiful. We do have a quorum without Dick, so we have five. Okay. We do. Yeah. Okay. Yep. That's what we need. You're right. All right, he's back. He's on. Come on. Okay, yeah. okay I'm just got to get my there video back up. Yeah. Can you see me? Yep. Yeah, we see you. Okay. All righty. Go. We already, we already voted um, yes, I guess, guys. We already did the call. 
Yeah, so Dick, just to fill you in, uh, changes to the minutes is uh, Paul Murphy, it says he's non-voting, so we changed him to voting. Um, and number 10, we just have to add Norm. I did the roll call already, so we're ready to get started. Uh -oh. Okay, yeah. Annie, yeah, this minutes. is Mike DeVay, I just signed on. All right, I'll add you. I got to zoom in. Yeah, I know. I you all done? Yeah, thank you. Have a good time? Okay. Yeah. Good. Thank you. All right. Oh, Dick is here. Dick? Yeah. Okay. Here. All right. Awesome. Mike, you joined us. Correct. Okay. Yeah, somehow mine dropped out. So, All right. anyway, I'm back. Okay. Computers. All right. So, let me just get back to where I was. Um, have you? So the minutes are voted on? Yes. No. no. We didn't vote. Okay. We just called. We, we just had one change. Well, we just had a couple of minor changes. Yeah. All right. I'll, I'll make a motion to accept the minutes. Malcolm. Yeah. I'll second. second. Who did? I'll second. Sounded like Paul. Like Paul. Paul. Yep. And all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Let me go run down the roll call. All right. So Norm. Yes. Mike Coombs. Yes. Malcolm DeBay. Yes. Mike DeBay. Yes. Myself. Yes. Uh, Deb's not here. Yes, I am. Yes, she uh, is. Deb's here. Oh, you are. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, Paul. <laughs> Yes. Okay. Unanimous. Confirmed. Okay. <laughs> Public comments. Hearing none, seeing none, we will move on. Our guests tonight are Jerry Patria and Peter Courier. Correct? Okay. Um, there are a few of you left to do the conflict of interest. I will send out another re email reminder. I, I think we're at 90%, but I, I think it may have been one or two. Um, I did get uh, Rick's. I'm waiting for Ken to drop his off. I got mine to do. I keep forgetting it. Okay. Um, so we'll move on. 141 Congamon Road, uh, Krabby Joe's, a.k.a. Krabby Joe's. So you've got on page six, let me get to page six. So we're all looking at the same thing. And on page six, uh, we had copies of the reconstruction plan uh, for Congamon Road, uh, town maps and, and everything planning board approved uh, a parking plan back in 2018 for Krabby Joe's. Unfortunately, there's a uh, another planning, another parking plan that had, I believe, if I remember correctly, was in upwards of 90 something spaces. The only problem was that the 90 spaces included ones over the side of the hill would have been in the water. They also included ones, a whole slew of them on the town right away and also on Beach Road right away. It could, you can't occupy and count parking spaces on town property. And then that there's a setback requirement. None of that was met. So they've got to go back to the well and, and draw a, a proper plan. And, and the reason for all this is, is the facility was closed for more than two years. That's the magic number. If you're closed for more than two years, everything has to now be brought up to current standards. And you know codes, all the codes, whether it be parking, whether it's the building, fire, fire, everything. Does it have to meet ADA and all of the new? Uh, oh, absolutely. Wow. Absolutely. Wow. Because the they're already working over there. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, because the one that that uh, was had originally planned on purchasing, it did not. Actually, two of them didn't. And this uh, this one is Ken Eggleston from Suffield. Mm -hmm. And 
so anyway, I'm not sure what they're doing, um, but that's, like I said, uh, he's already had a visit from the uh, building inspector and the code enforcement. He toured it and told him in general what he had to do, basically bring it up to code, um, you know, everything. So at the same time, he wants to have uh, a marina there and has expressed that. And again, it's parking where you have to have dedicated parking spaces for the marina. And already the facility does not have adequate enough parking for just the restaurant. Can I just ask something on that topic? I'm just curious, what does yep. Saunders do for parking? He's got, I believe across the way, across the street, beside him. Um, there's several, you know, several other areas along. He owns both sides of the road on Kangaman Road. Yeah, he owns down the, the old camper place there. What's that right. called? Town? Uh, he owns Travel a lot of trailers. Is his. Trailer yeah, counter. Yeah, he owns all of those. He's got parking. He's got huge areas there. You just don't okay. notice it. That's right. All. Yeah, I was just curious about that. That's all. Yeah. So at any rate, he's got a lot of work to do over there. Um, and as you know, we have to monitor it from uh, this request for a marina because that has to go through Chapter 91. That's not anything that can be done with local permitting. And so we have to wait and see what he, what he uh, plans on doing. And also, that has to be, I believe, handicap accessible. I'm not sure how one does that because it's down at the bottom of a cliff. Hmm. And, you know, I, I, so I don't know whether that is, has to be or not. But like I said, it, it's not accessible at grade. And in order to have a zigzag ramp all the way down, it would take every every square inch of the property to get there because you have to meet land you know you have to have certain landings that's all that ada compliance stuff so i'm not mm -hmm. sure how you do that mm -hmm. so anyway that just thought i that's what you can read from pages six through 14 it'll give you an idea what's going on um if there's no questions on that any further questions? Uh, uh, the, the only question I have, Dick, but it needs to come up once they apply, is that we've got to make sure that the same thing does not happen that's happening, you know, over on Walk on the Water or... Yes. I mean, that, it's a disaster over there and, you know, I don't know what's going on. You can maybe help us out on that too. We'll get to that one. Yeah. Okay. Um, so anyway, this, this is, uh, was with the former planner, Alan Slessler, and it's with the current planner, uh, John, and, and he will, you know, he'll follow up on it. Okay. I've copied him on everything that was in the past. Uh, so at any rate, we can move on, unless there's other questions on that one, we can move on to page 15. which brings us to 129 North Lake Ave, the home of three permanent uh, docks that far exceed 600 square feet. And DEP rejected their, their uh, chapter 91 license application. They voided the original one, they rejected another try and gave them a series of questions to answer. They never answered any of those questions. So their application basically is shredded by DEP. They won't do anything with it. So, I'm not sure if, if the wording is voided or nullified. nullified. Chapter 91, if you nullify a dock, you're supposed to remove it from the water immediately. Right. And that, and the problem is, is these are permanent, and I'm not exactly sure how one does that. This is Despard again, right? Yes. Okay, so 
there's been fines or something going on, isn't there? What what's going on? I don't know of any fines. However, at the last meeting, you uh, it was voted on that I would send uh, uh, an input to DEP, which I did. That's what's on page fifteen. Yep. And subsequent to that, I have left messages for both uh, mm -hmm. David Cameron and Brian Harrington. David is is the uh, the guru, the the Chapter 91 person in the Western Region, and Brian is the deputy director of Western Region and also an attorney for Western Region. So, and I also left phone messages for both of them. Neither are in the office because of COVID. They're operating from their homes. So, okay. we have requested a Zoom meeting with them, and the, the chief, um, Bob Landis, and our code enforcement officer kyle scott chris pratt and myself are, are looking to have this uh zoom meeting with the two uh dep officials and go over this whole thing so i will let you know as soon as we have a zoom meeting okay what comes out of that but i summarized below on page 15 the bottom of page 15 has the issues that were raised by DEP and you had a copy of that administrative deficiency um, statement in the last uh, meetings handouts. So I just, all I did was break it down into what was said in there, uh, what the issues are that have to be resolved. Basically it, it, it exceeds 600 square, square feet, each of them do. Aggregate is more than 1800 square feet. And there were no building permits ever issued for those facilities. And they have to have building permits because they're permanent structures with roofs and, de and permanent decks. So the, the, um, that's, that's another problem. And that, that all has to be resolved between the building department, DEP, and the owners. Okay. Any other questions on that one or do you want to move on? Move on. Move on. Okay. So the next one is 101 Point Grove Road, which is on page 19. And I just, we had a, a whole pile on the last one, but I just had the latest input because again, I, I was asked to send uh, an input to DEP. So page 19 is the letter to DEP, the email to DEP. And again, uh, DEP had conditions in the Chapter 91 license for 101. Those are not being followed. The configuration of the docks, the, the uh, rental of spaces on them was contingent in their license upon being approved by the planning board special permit. Planning board refused to approve that because they didn't have adequate parking. And again, they only have 30 something spaces for the whole facility. So, and you have to have dedicated spaces. So the, uh, they are, they got fined by the zone, by code enforcement officer. I believe that fine was $3,000. And it's what it was, was $300 times 10 boats at that time. He was going to issue another one because they're now up to 13 boats. <sighs> and he could actually issue them daily, but he has not done that. Yep. So, they have a sign, a, a chapter 91 license sign uh, on their docks. Yeah, but it does not, the configuration, they had yep. five years to meet the configuration on the drawings that they submitted and they do not meet that. Okay. So that's another issue. So it's basically a chapter in any one license. They're not, there's several items on there that they're not following. And we're again, the same, when I left the message for the other one for 129, I said, and 101, you know, so we, 
need to talk to the same two people at, at uh, DEP. So unless you have any questions on that, we could go to 20, page yeah. 20. So what I had to, what I have to do annually is summarize the expenses, which are actually are on page 22. And, and these letters went one to uh, CRC and one to uh, Suffield. And Suffield actually sent me a purchase order uh, which is referenced on the letter. And that was more than adequate to cover it. Their bill was 6,513 and 42 cents. And the CRC one you can see uh, was 3,158.33 cents. So that's for fiscal year 21, which ended on June 30th. So I do this annually uh, and, and it goes to our accounting and then they, you know, they uh, offset monies that we spend during the year, which goes into, uh, it goes back to pay off part of what we spent. Suffield and Southwick were identical. We split, uh, you know, we we're 50-50 on, on a bunch of items and one third, one third, one third on the other ones, which you can see on that, that chart. So the, the next one on page 23, as everybody knows, <laughs> Lake has been kind of high. And so 23 addresses the, the, the weir gates and the lake level and that as one of the items that were in the original letter that went out from uh, Joe Didi to state officials and to federal officials. And I did see, happen to see uh, our, our, uh, our officials and had discussion with them about it. But this one that page, uh, page 23 is a reminder to the federal officials which would be for uh, Senator Markey and Representative Neal. Those are the two aides there, uh, Russett and Cashton, respectively. So I've had just more discussions with them, had, you know, they've called me, we've had idle chats and they are still trying to get an NRCS project or projects, first one, First priority is Canal Brook. Second priority is Great Brook. So they are still trying to get those as projects where they would do the whole thing, design it, permit it, and do it. Good. Uh, and wow. you can you can read the, the uh, let me just flip right here. Just trying to, right through page 29. And they're all in your reading file. Yeah. And I basically took the letter that, that Joe Didi sent out to uh, Richie Neal and added that to this, you know, as part of the email that I sent out. And it was just a tickler. So then page 30. Again, as I said, I saw John Velas and I've talked to Nick Baldiga and trying to get some of the state funds so released to do the weir gates. So we try and keep the federal focus on the dredging project because that's very expensive. That's millions. And the state focus on the weir gates, which is 200 K. And that's what that page 30 is for. So Dick, Again. you're saying that the weir gates that we put in for 50 grand has grown to 200 K. Yep. That's, your, that's yep. incredible to me. Is that because of the cost of aluminum or what? 
What is the they're, deal? They're stainless, they're stainless steel. Oh, stainless. Well, I mean, I'm just amazed that this thing has gone from 50. Well, two things happened. The company that made them was from Orange, uh, Massachusetts, made okay. the ones we purchased. And yep. those were, were, you know, they cost us 50K back on fiscal 2013. Yeah, seven, eight years ago. Yep. Right, which, which would have doubled it to 100K anyway. But 200K. But what happened was, a company from Canada bought them out and then closed them. And okay. so everything is from one company. There's no, no more competition. Yeah. And they jacked up the prices. Plus they have to be transported instead of on a truck from orange mass, which is pretty much around the corner uh, to bring them in from Canada. Okay. So that's that's why. Yeah. But it's a design. It's really there's no permitting required. It'll fall under our generic order of conditions, our DPW generic order of conditions. And already had this discussion with uh, Concom, and we're basically replacing wood with stainless steel. So that's that doesn't require any design work. The ones that do the design are the company that makes them. They come out, they measure. Uh, once we select the company, they measure them and they build them. They're all custom. So they measure the slots they go in and then, then fab them and deliver them. So at any rate, that's what that, that uh, covers our, our, uh, our weird gates. And 31, we've had all these discussions about the tournament rules and the uh, you know, noise and, and all that stuff. And I had many, many conversations and emails with four of the uh, tournament directors who have opted to, to help fix the, uh, you know, address the complaints. So what we did, you remember at the last meeting, uh, we adjusted the the words that are on the tournament rules handout, which happens to be unfortunately I got one of them out of out of sequence here because it, it relates to two of the handouts. On page forty two is what is going to every tournament director, and it it's been uh, viewed by the. There we go. Thank you, Annie, for turning it. <laughs> uh, and basically, the, the ones that I think you want to look at are, whoop, disappeared, are the, the sound travels over water. So keep the volume down between 9 a.m., 9, 9 p.m., and 9 a.m. And starting call outs are by a flip chart. I will have those flip charts tomorrow. I had an email from Chris Sparks, and he's hand delivering them tomorrow. <clears throat> they were made by uh, another one of the primary fishermen uh, in, in these clubs as a print shop. And so he volunteered his time and materials to, to make them. So in other words, they'll flip over number one, number two, number three, instead of calling them out. Okay. And they will reside at the ramps, they, at North Ramp. There'll be two sets. And they borrow them for the for the event and turn them right back to the ramp attendant, and then they go back into storage. Hey, Dick, just so yep. I I know what to do. What about when they start at seven a.m.? Do I still have to use the flip charts because it's before nine a.m.? I think it Should would. I just keep it. I think it would be a good idea. Personally, okay. I, other people can chime in on that. I would say yes. Just keep it, yeah, the same yeah. for everybody. Okay. Keep it consistent. No okay. Right. So, yeah, that's fine. All right. And then we addressed um, fish health. And that is the boats have to be left in the water, which we had, had before, unless uh, leaving the facility prior to weigh in. So then we added in, and this is their suggestions that the way all the weigh ins which they do at the gazebo, that's fine. 
but returning the fish by way of your boat in weigh-in bags filled with lake water directly to the last, uh, the lake, to the lake past the southern no wake buoys. So they're going to take them out into the deeper water and then release them. So they're not releasing them at shore. And so this should really help prevent injury to the fish because they're not going getting dumped into shallow water. So they cannot release them from the shore or the ends of the boarding docks. And they all agreed to that. And I think that's it, right? That's all the new things on there. Any comments on that? The only yeah, other I, thing we put, Dick, is about if you hook a, a line into your uh, canvas or somebody's seats. That's the only other changes we made. What was that one? If if they hook a boat seat or oh, a yeah. canvas. Yeah, that's, and that changed. To carefully remove it, not to rip the fabric. Not to rip it out, not to yank right. on it to get it out. Yep. Thank you. Okay, so we can go back to um, that. So Annie is, has emailed these out, by the way, to all of the tournament uh, directors, any, any tournament applicant, which is usually the director. So if you can rotate that back. <laughs> hey, Dick, this is about a month old. Have there been any complaints since we started this on the noise? No, I haven't heard any. Have you, Annie? I, I have not. Okay. Well, that's good. Yeah. Good. And okay. I really make sure that they know. And, you know, when I call them, I say it. And then the mornings that I'm at the boat ramp, I also say it. And I've been handing out those uh, those rules. The, the ones we just looked at are the new ones, but the previous ones, I've been handing out, making sure the directors know uh, you know, they have to follow them. You know, they don't want to face any repercussions and uh, people have been really understanding and they want to come back to the lake. So they, they make sure that everybody knows. Great. Okay, so the, the next thing is page 34, 159 Berkshire. That's another longstanding issue. And uh, Randy Brown is now following that. He, he uh, sent out that email to this Derek Hale, who is the one that's doing the design for fixing the, addressing the uh, erosion issues and the, the dam that has to be removed. They have to restore the, the channel and vegetate <laughs> the whole place. Yeah. So he's, he's doing that design and he had a time, I wasn't aware what the uh, time frame was for that. But at any rate, uh, Randy reminded them that it's due no later than August 13th. So I have a call in to Derek uh, just to find out, because he had called me a couple times from his perspective, how it's coming. And then the next thing, there were missing buoys. Um, they were in the area of 116 Berkshire, you know, the Ice House Piers? Yeah. There were two ice house piers that had buoys on them, danger buoys, and they, I don't know whether they broke loose, somebody cut them loose, whatever it was, they were floating around the lake. And the uh, Mike, Ger Mike Gerard, one of the uh, police officers, has been really stepping up to the plate to help us. Thank you know, we hold uh, such a debt of gratitude because. He has spent so many hours of his own time out there uh, moving buoys, putting in new moorings, uh, you know, just repairing anything that's broken. So, so with Rick's absence. So at any rate, that's we, they're going to take care of the two danger buoys. He knows where they came from. He's going to fix the moorings if that's what it is. Not sure because... Uh, it depends on what shift he's on, whether he can work on the lake or not. A lot of times what he does, he'll, if he works the night shift, then he works the day out in the lake. He spends time out on the lake. And he had a friend with him the other day to help him. 
So I give them a whole bunch of parts to go fix things. Um, and let's see, Danger Boys. Then the next thing was on 36, getting back to the buoy lights, the bottom of it. Yeah. And to make a long story short, you can, you can read that, but the chief has agreed to fund um, a test vehicle for a buoy light and a cage problem is we don't have a design for a cage because all the ones that are everything that's made is for for uh made by the buoy manufacturers they sit on the top of the buoy and our problem was we had more than five thousand dollars worth of destroyed lights and mounts back you know 15 years ago and we can't we cannot tolerate that. So we have to have a cage, something not unlike what's on the lights that are on the fishing pier, because we had the same thing happen to the lights, the warning lights on the fishing pier. And so I designed those stainless steel cages that are that are on there. We had them built locally at a machine shop. And I believe it's three eighths inch thick stainless steel plates and maybe three eighths inch rods, stainless steel rods. So they are a little more foreboding. So we need to do something like that. We do not have a design. If anybody wants to volunteer and make a sketch, um, I can pretty it up. Right now I am buried with, with projects that we have ongoing in town. So we need a, we need a design for a cage because we're not gonna put any lights out as targets. And, and uh, the chief absolutely agrees with that. He says, cannot put any lights out unless they are properly guarded. Because we can't afford what happened back, like I say, 15 years ago. And the price of the lights has gone up, surprise. So any questions on that? No. Okay. So that gets us to um, 34, 35. And the, all the information that you saw on the fishing tournaments is more of it on that. The next one's 38, 39, 40, 41, 42. That's all relates to the fishing tournaments. Now, the one thing uh, I had an input from uh, the chief about counterclockwise rotation, which he had an input from at CRC. So this is, uh, oh crap, it's gonna show backwards. Um, I'm not sure how I can do that, but you can, you get the idea. There's the top of it. It says attention all boaters, counterclockwise. Uh, and rotation, Congamon Lakes, on Congamon Lakes, okay? And it's, as you can see, it's uh, red, yellow, and white. Really stands out, they're gonna go at both uh, the, the launch ramps at north and south on either side, and at the entry of each. So we, we have a spare one, we got six, we need five, and they only took a, a like a day and a half to get made. So if we have to get more, we'll get more. But we should anybody... probably put a no wake about like no wake within 150 or whatever feet of the boat ramps as well. <laughs> people, people, it, there's a no wake buoy right there. And if people are that stupid that they don't know, that's nothing to do with Congamine. That's any body of water, by the way. Just so everyone knows, I was verbally attacked for letting people know about the no wake zones today. Right, and I and I when I'm okay. down at the north ramp, you want to hear the language come out of boaters when you tell them, you know, no wake, and the, the the gestures that you get, and and they're staring at a buoy that's three feet out of the water, two feet in diameter that says no wake five miles per hour max. Gee, I don't know what that means. So, we need boating licenses in Massachusetts. Yes, yes absolutely need boating licenses. So, Dick, 
This the chief asked for this because what people didn't understand that there's counterclockwise rotation. Yes. Yes. Okay. Well, if you have the money, you can go How about on speeding late. through you don't the need channels. To know these things, unfortunately. Uh, Mike Coombs, did you say something or? Yeah, I mean, I tell you, Dick, I saw it on your note, and I see it almost every day. They are not slowing down at the sandbar through that area. They're I agree. Through their full speed. And the only way you're going to get, like I said, those say five miles an hour, no wake, very clear. And the only way that's going to get uh, attention is when they get tickets. And I know that uh, one of the officers who, who is, has done a lot of the work out there, actually there's a couple of them that have given out a pretty good sized handful of tickets. There's others that just give out warnings. And I think when you hit them in the pocketbook, that's how you get attention. Yeah, but I, I think that's only on the weekend. I mean, no, no, they've been out there. You can go out there right now. There's like 12 jet skis on Metal Pond zipping around, going everywhere. They know the police aren't out during the week. So but, it's free for all. And what the chief said is if you see it, if you observe it, and I repeat, repeat exactly what he said was, please call the station 569 5348, press zero, and talk to the dispatch and turn in what you see. A lot, they can send an officer down, which they've done, down onto Brayton Drive, to the end of Brayton Drive, and, and watch from there and get numbers, because they have binoculars in their, in their vehicles. So he said, you need to call it in. If you see it, call, call PD. Plus it goes in the log. And it's recorded. So that's the, that's the one thing he stressed. He says, even to me, because I told him what I observed the other night and, <laughs> and in the dark fly, you know, boats flying back and forth in pitch black. Now we got at least a full moon. So they have a little bit of light, but this was when it was dark out there and they were yeah. doing easily 40. So they do want to know. Okay. Um, is there anything? Oh, conservation update. I think I missed that en route. Yes, you did. Mm -hmm. no, well, we had, we, had, any time. we had a bit of a technical difficulty and we didn't end up having a conservation meeting oh. on, on Monday. Okay. <laughs> so that was our one July meeting, unfortunately. So, um, I guess we're going to make it up in uh, in August. Okay. <laughs> okay. Sorry about that. All um, right. So that made that the, short and I, sweet. I guess yep. it was a problem with the uh, Zoom number. Huh. Yeah, it, it it had to do with Dennis retiring and using his old <laughs> numbers, and when he when we went to use it, they were no longer valid. Ah. So, okay. Hey, hey Jerry, had had a uh, a replacement been found for Dennis Clark? At this not, as far, not as far as I know. Okay. I'm not even sure if there's an interim one, but uh, I was hoping to find that out too. Okay. So there's no conservation officer on Lake Congamong right now? Uh, coordinator. Yeah. Yeah. So it would seem. I guess our chair will probably fill in some of the gaps. Okay. You know. Okay. And, and I send everything to, um, to Gene and to uh, Chris. Mm -hmm. Right, right now, that's what I'm doing. Jean's pretty uh, good at holding the fort down. She's a fantastic secretary. So chances yeah. are, if you have an issue, just contact Jean and she'll make sure the right people see it. Yeah, that's what I do. I always copy the uh, yeah. the chair and, and uh, Jean. Right. Even even when it was with Dennis, I always send it to, to Chris and, and Dennis. It's always a good idea, yeah. Yeah. Um, anything else, anybody? I think Norm wanted to share something. Yeah, yes. go ahead. Can, uh, uh, this, is, are you seeing my screen now? Um, They're not. So no. just no. a little brief run through. You clicked share screen, correct? Yeah. Okay, and then when you do that, uh, when you press, you'll click the top left one that says screen. And then uh, you have to go to your documents and pull it up. 
So if you need to put it in a new folder to make sure no one sees your documents, you can do that. Okay. All right. <laughs> it took me quite a while to finally get it figured out. <laughs> Hey, hey, Dick, we have a uh, someone called Peter Currier there. Does he have any comments or was he just observing the meeting? Do you have anything, Peter? I'm from the Westfield News, just observing. Okay. Hey, can you see this now? Nothing yet, just you. Bottom right, if you click share, it should pull up. Yeah. Ah, looks like we're, we're getting there. There we go. Yep. Hey, we got some your snow. Desktop background. You got your screen. Okay. Oh. Wrong season. Now if you put <laughs> that up on your screen. <laughs> All right, I'm working on it. There you go. We're, we're a little bit out of that season, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> and here we go. Okay. Ah. Can you see this? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. There we go. Look All at right. that. All right. So this is a very short interim report. Uh, I was going to give an update to the Conservation Commission yeah. uh, this past Monday that would be would have been similar to this, but obviously I didn't. Uh, I still have to do some um, some work. I got a, a few locations that I haven't been able to determine where they are. Uh, hmm. And I have um, uh, a few other issues. I want to I want to recheck my numbers and double check that to make sure. But uh, this is the status as of right now. And let's page down. Okay. And when you look at total number of stickers, and I have it listed by the docks <laughs> vessels, which is all all powered vehicles, floats, mm -hmm. moorings, buoys in total. So in Massachusetts, we have 85 dock violations, no stickers, 152 vessels for a total of, and then there's a few smaller ones for 246, and you can see what Connecticut is. So we have a total Jeez. of 457 sticker violations uh, today. But now I have to preface that because the actual violations is higher than that. It's over 500 because what happens is if a, you have a person that has a boat and doesn't live on the lake and they go in and get a sticker themselves mm. and, and, and they will show up on the sticker list, but they won't show up on the inventory list. So interesting. Uh, you ought to be able to go to a dock and if there's three or four boats there, determine who the four boats belong to, okay? And if everybody filled out their, uh, their sticker form correctly, uh, you know, like I put on mine, I put my sister-in-law's boat on mine and mm -hmm. she doesn't do it herself. Yep. So you go to my yep. dock, you're gonna see yeah. you're the back of it. I do so that be over, there's over 500 violations when you look at it from that perspective. Mm -hmm. So total okay. estimated loss of income is $8,900. Uh, however, you have to figure out how to factor in the, the, the Suffield gross payment. Um, yeah. Then I, yeah. Then those, and do you know what that is by any odd chance, Norm? I don't know what this year's number have is. Have you heard? Yeah, I, I don't know if Jane, Jean gave you anything on that. No. Uh, I, I haven't asked her yet. I know it goes up every year. Yeah. Well, just, just to let you an idea, this is a very difficult project. Oh, yeah. I had over, over 40 hours into it so far. Uh, hmm. Of course, it, it doesn't help that I haven't lived here all my life on the lake like some of you people. So when I'm on the lake looking at houses, I don't recognize any of the, any of the houses by name. <laughs> okay? yeah. So I had to go do first to a, a land trip and identify the color, colors of all the houses by number. And then so that when I got on the lake, I could say, okay, all right, that's a dark gray house. Yep, yep, that makes sense. <laughs> and uh, so I've gone back. Wouldn't it be forth. nice if the numbers were on the docks? <laughs> well, that's, that's yeah. part of the problem here. Yes. Um, right. There, 
because I took an inventory of that. In total, is only six and a half percent of the docks have the location sticker on them. Yeah. Okay, so that's wow. that's a serious problem. Uh, you know, for two reasons. Number yeah. one, uh, you said six and a half percent. Six and a half percent. Okay. Oh my God. So these violations involve 161 mailing addresses, 181 mailing addresses. So if they want to do a, a mailing uh, out, they'll have to do 181 letters. Mm. Okay. A uh, couple of other things. Uh, there are some right of way violations that have boats and docks on them. Uh, the Conservation Commission will have to decide what they want to do about that. There's not that many, but there's some. And just okay. one point of information, all LMC members are not 100% compliant. So you know what they're going to come back with saying, well, you guys aren't compliant yourself. <laughs> so if you're not compliant, you may want to get compliant. So, so that's where I'm at right now. Uh, long way to go. I will give uh, a full report to the Conservation Commission at the ne their next meeting. I'll add some uh, issues and some recommendations and, and the numbers will be updated. But you can see, okay. oh, and one other point of information, I do not have the Marine, the two legal Mariners are not in here, okay? Because she doesn't give me those sticker ah. numbers, okay? So just to give you... Uh, mm. A heads up on the big hitters. I have that. Uh, Louis B's or the walk is the, has 15 violations, 13 boats and two docks. Uh, hmm. Then uh, let's see. Number two is 287 Lakeview Drive's got 12 violations, four docks, six boats, one mooring, and one swim platform. There's now several. Several with eight violations, several with seven violations. Hmm. Uh, also, you, the, you mentioned Louis B's uh, on there. They yeah. would not have um, the normal location stickers, like because those are LPP. But what they are required to have by their Chapter 91 license is their license information on their docks. They don't have a Chapter 91 license, so they. Which have one to, are you talking about? Louis B's 101. They do have a, they have a chapter 91 license. You just told I have a us copy it, of it. You just told us earlier in this meeting. No, they're that, just not in compliance with it. Norman. They're not in compliance with it. They, they have it, have but it. they don't pay any attention to it. It's just the parking and a few other things that they haven't done. And he said they have five years to do getting compliant. Okay. Rabbit, and that was and that's long anything. gone. Yeah. Okay. The only the the ones that have just FYI, um, try PBJ, Louis B's, Saunders, uh, are the three commercial uh, places that have Chapter ninety one licenses. There are probably and I I sent that list to uh, Gene. There are probably oh, 30 Chapter ninety one licenses total between Connecticut and Mass. There's actually quite a few in Connecticut that have chapter 91 licenses. Hmm. Yeah. How do they do that? Because it's in Connecticut. They apply the same way. They they can apply because it's on Mass apply. water. Oh, wow. OK. Yeah. So, yeah. I, you know, I, I, my only con I, if I can make a comment on Connecticut there, Norm. Yeah. Um, as far as the vessels, floats, more, that's all free in Connecticut. The only thing is that Connecticut Stuffield sends a check for the docks for 2000 or 2020. Yeah. All of our stickers are free for vessels, floats, moorings, and buoys. So there's no cost incurred, unfortunately. It's in the way it's written. Yeah. Right now they get a check for 2000, whatever the number is, and that takes care of all Connecticut docks and boats. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's not done correctly because there's there's a lot of money missing there, but that's the agreement. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For that, and so that that number there, you know, there's there's there are violations, I guess, but there's no income income to them. Mm -hmm. 
I, I can just yeah. call and get stickers for free. So. And, and I think one of the things that we should do when, now that we have like this information norm that, that you have, have uh, taken is that also should give us reason to go back to Suffield and say, hey, you know, here's the real number. Right. And the dollars would add up to X. Yep. Right? Yeah. I, I, I agree with that statement. The only problem is, is I, I, you know, whoever made the agreement with Suffield, Jerry might know this, um, I, I'm not sure you can go back at this point or you can negotiate because whether it was a selectman or somebody. It was a selectman, but we can go back number. to yeah. our select. Our, we yeah. can go back to our selectman. That's correct. There was an but agreement. We can't go back to Suffield. There was an agreement between uh, selectmen of each town. And right. at right. the time, it, it was thought that better to get something than nothing at all and have people argue about it. So I guess that's that's where it was at. There are people that are upset about the amount that Suffield pays. However, it's probably better than nothing. But I do agree. Okay. And I think that that uh, they would be willing to up the ante because it was our selectmen that threw out the number. It was not them. And like I said, and that's why they agreed to it. I, yeah, it, I was at the meeting. I believe it does keep going up, and I'm not sure what this year's value is. I think it started at 2,000, and it's gone up from there. Yes, I think it was yeah. a 10 percent increase or something. Mm -hmm. Okay. But we should know <clears throat> what the difference is between what we get from Suffield and what we should get from Suffield, mm -hmm. and see if if how close the gap is. You know how far. Yep. Rather. I'll do that. Well, based that's on Norm's uh, excellent work, I think we can determine that. And I, I yeah, want to I, I thank Norm very much for going through all Oh, that. God, yeah. I know how hard it is, my friend. So thank you. Yeah, yeah yep. great job. And when, uh, Norm, when you update it, can you send me a copy of that? So for the next meeting, you know, when you present it to CONCOM, yeah. we can include it in the reading file? Yeah. I'll do that. That'd be great. Okay. Uh, there is there's one dock in on North Pond. It's I believe it's on 140 North Lake <laughs> Avenue. It's got one dock, six boats on it. And the dock and I don't know how uh, the boats that's, are, it might be an association one. It is. It is. That's the North yeah. Pond Association. I'm familiar with that. Okay. okay. Well, All right. I don't show any income from them. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's interesting. <laughs> but several of the associations have not paid their fees yet. That's correct. Mm -hmm. All right. So that should be letter to Mark Garrity uh, from CONCOM. Because he's the association president. Garrity. That's interesting. Because they do not have a chapter in any one license. I can tell you that fact. Okay, that's my report. Okay. Great Thanks, job, Norm. Mom. Great job. Excellent. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks, Norm. Thanks Norm. Any anything else for anybody? Did you want to talk about beaver dams at all or yeah, the, <clears throat> the uh well the beaver dams that were there are gone. I think we talked about that at the last meeting, but um Suffield and Southwick DPWs took out the ones in Connecticut and Mass. Um, water's flowing like a banshee. As a matter of fact, I noticed today it looks like it's down. I didn't go down and read, take a reading today. I, maybe uh, if I get a chance, I'll go down tomorrow. Or Mike, if you're down there. But I'd say we've lost another couple inches easily uh, since we've not had rain. We're doing a lot better. Dick, I looked at it. I didn't look at the down at the ramp, but I look at it in my own dock. I can tell how much is going up and down. It's going down. It's been going down steady for days, but as long as we get no rain, we'll be fine. Yes. We get a heavy downpour again, it'll start going back up again like it has. Yeah. We've been floating in that 225 feet plus or minus a couple inches there for a while. Yes. Um, it is flowing like crazy, but it's coming in yeah. from yeah. this pond and all the rest of the watershed area. Yes. I mean, that's that's the real issue. You've got square miles of, you know, probably 10 or 15 square miles on watershed that just keeps filling in yep. and that's holding lake level where it's at 
And and the, the rule of thumb is, by the way, and and you, you can't hold me to it, it's not an exact number, but experience says that when we have endless uh, heavy rainfalls, the lake will come up two inches basically for every inch of rainfall. Yep. Yeah. And it usually takes three days for any change in outflow, fall, you know, outflow rate to see an effect on the lake. Just right. There's so much water involved. Yep. Yep. Like you said, it's 10, 15 square miles of watershed. Con Congamon is a at the bottom of a big watershed. Good point. Right. Hey, Dick. Uh, yeah. This is Deb. And um, so the dam I saw yesterday down near the rear gates, did you, are you saying they, they took it away or? No, that that's, the, out a week ago. <laughs> that's, the, weeks ago. that's the remnants of what was there. <clears throat> yeah, we took that out at least a week ago. But the problem originally came about when Suffield didn't take out the Beaver Dam 100 feet before Mountain Brook. I had been telling Dick about that for about 10 days and the whole watershed area got filled up for a week before the rain started two weeks ago. Yep. And it just kept coming up and coming up and coming up. And then on that Thursday, the rain started about two weeks ago. And we already had the whole watershed of Goose Pond filled. We had Cannonbrook filled. And basically the lake was at a pretty high level already because yes. they didn't take that one dam out that stopped everything. That one dam that was in there, I saw every day for a week and a half, and Suffield was did not get to it. Now, the nope. problem is Suffield wasn't mowing that area. They still don't mow that area. So I don't know if Suffield has issues getting into that one area there, and Dick knows them better than I do, but they got private contractors in there to get it out a, a day in the rain, and that's when it finally started going down. And, that, and the reason it wound up being private contractors, because they were in much the same boat they're probably about the same size maybe even they might even be smaller i don't know um because the way southwick's dpw is organized is that water sewer highway um and and solid waste all can work any job and when they need people for let's say you have a big water main break they can borrow from highway, they can borrow from transfer. And so they move them around. I don't know if Suffield can do that or not, but I do know that they were wrestling with a lot of the same things we were from those damn storms with trees down everywhere and keeping the roads open uh, during the storms. And But that and was flooding. before the storms, Dick. This was a week and a half before the storms right. that I started. Mike and I were walking down there and we were telling you that there was no outlet at all because right yeah. before Mountain Brook stops all outlet because you got the Goose Pond, Cannon Brook and all of them flowing into one area there. And then it goes across over towards the quarry and they stopped it dead right in its tracks. And that should have been taken out about a week and a half earlier. I agree. And, and I sent it to him, you know, the first pictures you sent me, I sent to him immediately. So it just, you know, it's they just can't... didn't get to it. They were and then when they then when all the storms hit, they couldn't get to it because they had trees everywhere. Oh yeah. That's what happened. Yeah. Yep. It's I a lot can easier. Can we ever when go you... down there and do this? Could we go into Suffield and get these out when they're there? No, we can't. Because we would have never had an issue with any flooding in all of Congamon no. if that thing had been cleared a week and a half early. Yeah. I agree. Okay. But unfortunately, we have to say, please. I got you. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Anything else, anybody? No? I'll take oh, a motion. I'm, I'm sorry. Um, so somebody, has anybody volunteered to, to help with the design of the buoys? I know you were asking for a volunteer, Dick. Yeah. Anybody? Buoy light, the light cage. What does it take? I'm not an engineer, but I mean, I'd be happy to figure well, it it's, out. It's going to be something somebody's, it really would help if somebody's got design experience to, if you go look at the cages on the, on the, um, what do you call it? The fishing pier, you'll get, those are rugged. Those, those are designed to take somebody who's wielding a baseball bat. 
So what kind of person do we need to reach out to? Like, Somebody because I mean, that... I can do the research to find someone to help us. Yeah, if you can find somebody, you know, if they can convert what's the idea that's down there, that works. And that's the kind of thing you need a rugged. And then you have to look at the top of the buoy. There's a huge bolt comes up through the buoy and that's what we're gonna attach it to. So what it's was like the issue with inch. the, cause we talked about Coast Guard buoys and whatnot. What did they use and why can't we use those? The buoys that they use are thousands of dollars each. But for uh, the lights and the light cages, I'm sure there's light cages on them. Right, but they're a, a fixed, those are metal buoys, they're not fiberglass and they weigh probably a ton each and okay. they have a, a tender that, that picks them up when they need so to serve them. Can we pull the design from those? I'm not experienced with this. It's so not that I'm kind of, no, it's, it, it, the scale is five of our buoys would fit inside one of theirs. Yeah. Okay. So what if we scaled it down? I, I'm, like I said, I'm very inexperienced. It's like, it's like uh, taking, comparing a, a locomotive that's pulling a hundred car train to Boston to one of the ones in Southwick up on the Pioneer Valley live steamers. Okay, that's fair. Okay, I figured I'd give it a shot. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if 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 uh, we know what kind of person it's, it has to be an industrial designer. You think would be best, Dick, or yeah, somebody who, yeah, somebody who knows sheet, who knows uh, machining, what yep. you can do because these are going to have to be welded. You can't use sheet metal. You don't want sheet metal because that'll just break. See, it has to be an open cage. It's not, if, if it were something where you could leave a little window open, but then you can't see the light. So that's why the ones that are on the pier are the way they are, because you can see the warning lights through the rods. Okay. And those were not cheap. I would bet today those are gonna be a, a, a cage. See, because they're not quantity, you don't stamp them out. They're not like, uh, you know, making toys. Uh, they're, they're handmade and welded. Would you be willing to give us dimensions of the light and, um, you, you can, know, can somebody can go down and I, I, I have zero time to put into that. Okay. Right. <laughs> okay. I'd fire myself um, if I did that. Deb, okay. I'll work with you to figure it out if you want. Well, yeah, that would be great. We, okay. we'd like to move forward. Uh, the CRC has voted that we'd like to you know, with, for lake safety, go ahead and buy some. You know, we just need to know what's needed. But just just keep in mind, as I said in that one email, some is going to be just figured they're going to be somewhere around four, possibly $500 each. Mm -hmm. Right. So when I you step in it, there's going to be another golf you know, tournament. <laughs> So the best thing is if okay. you can find, you know, a, a design engineer who wants to spend some time, take a lot of measurements, sketch, do a sketch first, then I can review that. Okay. That I'll do. All right. Okay. Thanks, Dick. All right, guys. I got to okay, go. My, I got to get a charger for my phone here before this thing blows up on me. <laughs> All right, guys. Run out. <laughs> Anything else? Nope. Motion to adjourn. A motion to adjourn. Oh, no. motion, to, motion to adjourn. There you go. Norm. I'll second. second. I'll second it. Malcolm. Yep. And all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Unanimous. Okay. We okay. adjourned Thanks. and it is.